Roberts and Roberts Brokerage presents Keenvention 2015 Secession Panel. Roberts and Roberts, when you're serious about precious metals, online at rrbi.co. I think it's the third year that we're doing a secession panel here, and I think that, uh, you know, we're not on the cusp of secession or anything like that. Obviously, I think many of us would like that to be the case, but in order to get to secession, we have to talk about secession. We have to talk about secession with our friends and our family members and our coworkers, and maybe you don't want to use the term secession. It's, uh, it's got a bit of a uh, history behind it. So how about independence? How about independence for New Hampshire? And who better to lead said secession panel than one of the board members of the Foundation for New Hampshire Independence? It's kind of like a think tank, as I understand it, that has been formed here in New Hampshire to advocate for the idea of New Hampshire declaring independence from the United States. Uh, of course, I'm also one of the, uh, the board members of the New Hampshire Liberty Party, which is a political party that Daryl, myself, and some other folks have formed to put the idea of uh, secession and independence into the political conversations here. And hopefully we'll see more independence and secession-oriented organizations popping up over the years. But meanwhile, uh, these guys are doing a great job. They've got a flyer on the table back here. If you haven't seen that yet, it's pretty persuasive. It talks about secession without using the word secession, which is part of its brilliance. And um, they just came out with a bumper sticker. Did you bring any bumper stickers with you? I know, I'm put, I put them on the spot. I didn't ask him in advance. So, but. But if people want to get a bumper sticker, how would they go about doing that? And Rob, thanks for coming on. Appreciate it, man. You can introduce the rest of your wonderful panel. I will do. Thank you. All right, guys. Welcome to the secession panel. Uh, for me, secession, is, a lot of people view it as a dirty word. To me, it's not. Uh, it's really just about uh, withdrawing consent uh, from a governing body. Uh, the, the colonies did that uh, against Great Britain. Uh, there was a war of secession, though I'm, I'm a peaceful person. I don't want there to be a war. I want to be a peaceful secession from the federal government. Uh, but uh, going forward, like the, for this panel, I really want to be more so not what if, like what's going to happen uh, in regards to like what will happen if this happens, what happens if that happens, but how are we going to get there? What needs to be done? Um, now for... Uh, for secession act, um, activism here in New Hampshire, uh, we have done a few things. Uh, we've uh, we have been promoting our uh, bumper stickers to get out there. Uh, we actually had a great uh, email sign up list for the foundation for New Hampshire Independence uh, earlier this month. Uh, we've done a Bruin Sedition event in the spring to reach out to other people who support uh, independence for New Hampshire. Uh, we had two, I would say, successful. Uh, outreach events that happened around uh, the 4th of July, one in Manchester, one in Amherst, where we reached uh, hundreds of different people uh, with the ideas of New Hampshire independence. Uh, but going forward, uh, the panelists we got today, uh, we got Dennis Goddard here. Dennis, uh, is a, uh, he's been heavily involved in the political scene, uh, served as a selectman in his town, uh, Emeritus Director of Research for New Hampshire uh, Liberty Alliance, uh, and he also hosted a uh, TV show at some point in Conquer, correct? Um, then we also have uh, Ellen Ball. She's a member of the board for the Foundation for New Hampshire Independence. Uh, and also uh, Chandler Gable, who is also a board member for the Foundation for New Hampshire Independence. Um, so kind of bringing back uh, from the last panel, because I'm, I'm a huge Bitcoin advocate as well. Um, and I always view Bitcoin as one of those things where a lot of times people who talk, you know, their big, one of their pillars uh, to argue against the session is how is the state of New Hampshire going to print money? Um, is Bitcoin a viable solution to uh, end the need for the state to coin money? Uh, I know I don't want you want to jump in on that. Is Bitcoin or any other cryptocurrency, uh, is it... Uh, a good use to promote independence instead of saying like the Federal Reserve is going to print money or like the state of New Hampshire is or so forth. Uh, sure. sure, Rob, I'll jump in on this one. The um, I think Bitcoin is great. I think there are a lot of alternatives. We don't necessarily need to be like a smaller version of the federal government printing our own money. I mean, printing your own money is not always the best way to, to run a country. Just ask Zimbabwe. So, I mean, there, there are other things that we can do. We can do Bitcoin. We can have competing currencies 
Um, going forward, you know, U.S. currency could circulate, Canadian currency could circulate, Ithaca hours could circulate. You know, the, the possibilities are endless. So, um, yeah, I see, I see a lot of possibilities there for decentralizing the, the way that people um, choose which money to use. Yeah, and I, I have to agree with you uh, on that. I think, you know, accepting all different forms of currency would really be useful to any, you know, sort of nation state that's going out on its own. Um, and, and there's so many different alternative coins that, you know, Bitcoin could just be one of the many that are uh, generally accepted. And, and the great thing about that is um, it doesn't have to be regulated. You can just send it anywhere to anywhere from anywhere. So it's not like uh, if New Hampshire were to secede, they'd be totally isolated financially speaking. Yeah, the two questions to me sound completely orthogonal. Um, if you're talking about the current foreseeable future where the dollar is still reasonably strong, an independent New Hampshire would have to have a dollar peg because people just otherwise aren't bought into the idea. If you're talking about a little bit longer term, if the dollar, when the dollar starts to go absolutely in the toilet, people will naturally adapt Bitcoin and other alternative currencies completely independent of whether or not we're an independent state. No, I agree with you on that. And one other thing I also think is like, you know, you can always use uh, the American dollar. Like if you go around the world, the, the American dollar is used in other countries as uh, a, a form of trade and commerce as it is. So even if New Hampshire did uh, and will secede at some point, they can still use uh, the dollar as it is. I'm sure most places in New Hampshire would still accept it even if they did leave the union. Yeah, I don't think we'd see much change immediately, right? I think we'd still see people doing business in dollars, accepting dollars, and then maybe over time we would get a situation where slowly it evolves to be something more like a competing currency system. But I think you're right, Dennis, in the short term, the dollar is the dollar is it. Now, uh, welcome Mark Warren, who uh, uh, decided to jump, come join us on the panel here. Thank you for joining us. Uh, former state rep, also owner of Porcupine Realty here in New Hampshire. Uh, the question I was asking the other panelists is, uh, uh, can Bitcoin be a viable solution to uh, ending uh, government money? Because a lot of times people when we talk about secession, their, their big pillar against it is the idea that New Hampshire needs, who's going to make the money, who's going to print the money? Uh, is that really a viable question for people or can Bitcoin or any other cryptocurrency uh, fill that void? The short answer is it's probably just as viable as actual secession, which is highly unlikely. <laughs> so I'm here more of a devil's advocate about that whole idea and also to talk about some of the Thank you. I was wondering. That, that, thanks for that, uh, Daryl. So the short answer is yes. I, I like the idea of Bitcoin, but it's not very likely that secession would happen. But maybe we'll talk about ways of getting um, getting closer to that and some of the political ramifications and political challenges. And one thing, I, I think I heard um, Chandler say this at a previous panel at a different or, a different event was that. Maybe we should use the word uh, sovereignty as opposed to secession. I think it's palatable yeah. for yeah, more people. Yeah, we like independence or, or sovereignty. Independence, yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. All right, so earlier, uh, I believe it was this week or last week, uh, Mises recently did a report comparing um, uh, U.S. states to other countries and discovered that New Hampshire is one of the uh, wealthiest in the developed world. What benefits would New Hampshire see separating from the federal government? Uh, considering we're already... Uh, apparently one of the most uh, w wealthiest developed states in, in the world. How would uh, secession bring about more benefits to New Hampshire? It's an easy softball one. We'll go into harder ones coming up though. Um, yeah, oh, well, I'll take this one. I think we should add that to our FAQ actually. So we're, um, we're already wealthier than most states in Europe. What a great argument for striking out on our own. I think one of the biggest reasons to go out on our own is just that we currently give more to the federal government than we get back. The current estimate is that for every dollar we send to them, they give us about 70 cents back. So if we're even wealthy with that sort of business going on, then separating would just allow us to keep more of our wealth and become even more um, prosperous than we are. Yeah, and along with that, I think one of the biggest benefits that New Hampshire would see from not having to, uh, you know, rely on the federal government or give its money to them is um, there's there's a large, uh, you know, working class here. There's a lot of farms, farmland, um, like independently owned businesses. I think you would see a lot more of that blossom and bloom if there wasn't, uh, you know, all these hoops that people had to jump through with the federal government. So small business is always a good thing. That's like the basis of what the economy is founded on. Oh, absolutely. I think if you think New Hampshire is amazing today, just wait until you see what we can do when we get the federal government off our necks. 
All right, now considering I got two uh, politicos here at the table, um, kind of want to go into uh, the political realm for a little bit. Uh, last year, Scotland, they had a vote on secession. They didn't, didn't win. They, they're still part of the you know, uh, United Kingdom. However, that kind of legitimized, in my opinion, like the mainstream culture, that secession is something that can be talked about. It's, I mean, the fact that they allowed that to even take place, that vote, is powerful, and that that's not, it's, it's bringing it to the mainstay of, like, is this a viable option for uh, certain geographical locations to leave their larger controlling body? Um, in uh, New Hampshire, New Hampshire already has a strong independent streak to people that live in New Hampshire, not just uh, people that move here for the FSP, but locals as well. A lot of, I mean, this is the live free or die state. Um, and New Hampshire does have a very large uh, uh, house in regards to uh, uh, the House of Representatives where there's this very small people that they, each person represents. It's not like voting for Congress where like, you, you know, you're one of a million votes uh, casting toward a candidate. Um, what can what can be done and from the political side from like the inside the state house or whatnot uh, to promote uh, secession or New Hampshire and uh, independence whether it be running candidates or proposing bills or even like a referendum like what, what can be done from the inside yeah I'll address that last point first which is in regards to referendum we don't really have the referendum or ballot initiative option here in New Hampshire. They do out west, California, Nevada, Arizona, some of those states. You can just get a, a majority of the people to sign off in favor of something like that. It can have a lot of impact. I think the best baby step we could do here in New Hampshire would be through a multi-state compact. And there's a precedent for this. And the idea is the, uh, legislation can come forward through the House in New Hampshire that says if ex so many other states agree with this same language, then it has force. And I think there's a, um, a provision for that in the United States Constitution to allow for that sort of thing. And I believe the REGI, what's called the Regional Greenhouse Gas Initiative, which is a horrible thing, but that was an example, and it's a precedent for a multi-state compact, and that is from some New England states. Keith, um, Keith Carlson, a friend of a lot of ours, was talking about the multi-state health care compact, which was the idea, an idea to get a number of states to agree to the same legislation that would make uh, Obamacare null and void in those particular states. And this is viable. It's totally legitimate. It's valid. Even a lot of people in the, the House understand it. So I would say start with that, starting with the uh, so-called Arcadia movement, which would be, I think, Maine, New Hampshire, and maybe Vermont, I think it would be the first step if we get those three legislatures to agree on some sort of compact to start pulling away from the United States. Yeah, certainly we've seen that a number of times with legislation that maybe seems just a little bit out there, a little bit difficult. I saw it with um, industrial hemp, I think. Uh, had a similar rider in several of its incarnations where they say if, if five other kids jump off the bridge then we will too, sort of le legislation. Um, a lot of y'all may not be aware uh, of this because it's now fading somewhat into history, but um, just a couple of years ago, we had nearly the equivalent of a coup on our hands here in New Hampshire, wherein the House of Representatives was more or less held hostage over a vote on state uh, sovereignty. We had hundreds and hundreds of, to be honest with you, largely armed individuals chanting in front of our state house, demanding more or less that they stop recognizing the authority of the federal government. I don't know if you're aware that this happened. Um, and what was surprising to me is, I'm, of course, the, the motion failed, not by all that much. A lot would depend on the legislature. Um, it really is the case that another 10 or 15 Mark Wardens in the legislature, and you're talking about seeing New Hampshire getting interviewed by the freaking BBC World Service to find out why you're seceding, as opposed to, you know, some jackballs in a bus western, right? It's an entirely different can of worms with just like cloning him 10, 15 times, or just getting 10 or 15 other people elected. But specifically, I talked to some legislators um, from Texas afterwards who had, who had come up and talked to some of us about it, it was called the HCR 6, House Concurrent Resolution 6 in the year it was proposed. And they said, you know, what's different here from in Texas is that y'all were serious. You were gonna, y'all voted for this hoping to leave. 
That's uh, that's beautiful that that happened. I'd love to see more candidates get in to uh, State House run on a secessionist platform. I know Ian ran as uh, governor actually ran on a secessionist platform. I'd love to see more politicians get in there um, and not just be pro-liberty, but uh, be hardcore about pro-liberty and propose legislation. Uh, even if it's not secession, just nullifying most federal laws. Um, now, uh, speaking of the feds, uh, the feds have, uh, they're, I mean, the, the federal government's always going to be the federal government. But uh, recently, uh, the Real ID Act is coming back into the, the forefront in New Hampshire because uh, it hasn't been ratified by New Hampshire yet. So basically, the feds are, in my opinion, they're pretty much treating New Hampshire citizens as if we're already an independent nation because they're, they're going to be demanding that we need passports just to simply fly domestically. If I want to fly from Manchester to Providence, I need to get a passport to do so uh, coming up in a year if the state house uh, follows, if they fall in line with the, the federal government. Um, how can something like the Real ID Act uh, be used to promote New Hampshire independence amongst locals? You know, I think there's a lot of anti-Real ID sentiment here on the ground anyway, right? I mean, if we remember a few years back, we had, um, we had the governor and legislature actually sign off on a bill that says New Hampshire will not comply with any aspect of the Real ID Act. So, you know, people hate it. And I think people are going to hate it even more when they realize that now the federal government is demanding that we get a passport to, to travel anywhere. That is, of course, assuming that that happens. I'm not so sure it's going to. You know, the federal government has already played chicken with us a few times on this issue, and every time it's happened, they've backed down. So I wouldn't be surprised if that ends up happening again. And, you know, you, you use the past tense there, and, and it's too easy, I think, for people to think of that as, well, of course, it's like from God. Well, of course, it was the free state. And so, no, a lot of us worked our freaking asses off to make that happen. Um, it was close, yeah. And it ultimately happened because the governor of this state felt comfortable saying, no, we're going to do this, period, end of story, don't care if a federal judge somewhere says it's illegal, this is what we're going to do. And part of the reason that he was able to do that is because schmucks like me who like accost him at the, uh, at the Hopkinton Fair, right, you know, where he's just walking around shaking hands and just that little couple of seconds to say, hey, Governor, you know what, I really don't agree with you on most things, but I'm sticking with you on this real ID thing. This is so important to me. I'm with you because of this. He hears that from a bunch of people, and that's what empowers him to say, you know what, screw you, federal government. And so it's those tiny little things where if I'd say, I don't know, gone up and screamed in his face or something, that, that wouldn't have communicated much. But getting across that the people want this, that, that was extremely uh, effective and useful because a lot of people did it. All right. Uh Okay, so the feds have also been doing a lot of other things like they always do. Uh, the, the Department of Justice recently came out uh, targeting anti-government groups, um, creating a council to go after uh, what they consider anti-government groups in regards to, I mean, mind you, they, slow, they throw us into the same loop as, you know, uh, white supremacists to like religious fanatics and stuff like that, which, I mean, even being a secessionist, you're not technically anti-government, you're just for a smaller government, but yet that can be thrown into that aspect. Um, is there any fear of being a secessionist or promoting secession? Uh, do you have any fear of uh, the federal government you know, investigating you or coming in or what can also the follow up on that, what can we do to re, uh, push those fears away and, you know, stand up and practice free speech? Yeah, absolutely. I have a wife and kids and it, it is very scary to think that the, uh, the federal government could come after us. I mean, the, what I tell myself right now is that they're probably not going to realize that it's a problem until it's already too late for them to do anything about it. I think by the time that what we're saying gets taken seriously, there will be enough people who agree with us that it's not going to be politically feasible to crack down on any one person. Um, yeah. Other other than that, I think uh, we're we're in the right place. We have a great people of community who uh, great community of people who care about us. Uh, that's that's probably about the best we can do for now. Yeah, I would I would agree. There's certainly a fear, especially when you have plans for the future. Um, you know, you you don't imagine that uh, going to federal prison is a part of that. Um, but I mean, it is it is somewhat scary to think that. Um, 
you know, eventually they could be knocking on your door and, and looking for you. But um, I think it's more frightening to imagine living without, um, you know, fighting for what you believe in and just like watching all of these terrible things happen and, and not trying to like stand up for your beliefs or do anything about that. I think that's really the worst fate that anyone could suffer. So I have this demonstrable proof of the incompetence of governments across the world. I'm an anarchist, right? And I'm really open about this, okay? And I also work for the largest database company in the world, and like I have all the passwords. <laughs> I'm still waiting for my offer for a couple million in a small island with bad extradition laws, and I would take that. I would, I'm here, and there, there's no offer. These governments are incompetent. Uh, yeah, I hear you on that. Governments are in confidence. Uh, I, I, for me, though, I do have a fear that at some point, like, you know, if uh, the secession movement here in New Hampshire really picked up, that, you know, the feds are going to investigate and, you know, they're going to use propaganda to swing votes, swing uh, uh, public opinion against us, mark us as being a terrorist group or whatever. I mean, it's already been proved. They've already done that with. Uh, uh, Department of Homeland Security grants in regards to uh, Conquer and the Bearcat labeling free staters as terrorists. So it's not out of the realm of possibility that this is something that they can even put forth on the table as it is. Um, but uh, moving on from that, uh, again with the, the police state, they, they continue and continue to fund uh, organizations here in the state, uh, everything from the DEA raiding the local smoke shop uh, to uh, DHS grants for Bearcats to basic arming of police uh, around the country where the feds are just basically militarizing everything. Uh, what benefits like to uh, civil rights and just in general freedom would New Hampshire get from uh, leaving the union? Well, this, this actually kind of plays into the previous question as well. Um, yeah, one of the philosophies of the foundation of New Hampshire, for New Hampshire independence is be a good neighbor. We think that the best way that we can work to bring about independence is by being good neighbors and by doing that, by not only letting other people see that, yes, we're your friends, we're your neighbors, we ju we're just like you, we have the same hopes and fears and problems, and yes, we support independence. I think that makes it a lot harder for the federal government to demonize people or to, to um, mobilize propaganda against them. And... Um, you know, with, the, with regard to the militarization as well, I think if we really step up and we, we step in to protect people who are um, facing that and we, um, <clears throat> excuse me, when we do what we can to uh, speak out against them, to be there for people when the federal government tries to buy a bear cat for their town or whatever it is, I think that really speaks to people. It says, you know, these, these are my neighbors, these are my friends, they're on my side, they care about me. And um, it, uh, it, it's, all part of the, uh, it's all part of building a community and we're gonna, we're gonna need a community if we wanna go out on our own. All right, uh, Dennis and Mark, I have a question more for you two. Uh, you guys have both done a lot in the political world. What can be done in regards to uh, just giving the message out of secession to the to, to Democrats within the state house or within New Hampshire in general? Like, is there any like is there some like common ground that we you know that can be come across of like you know yeah we you know you should hate the federal government as much as we do? Like, what what can like be done to win over to like the left in New Hampshire? Yeah, it's going to be tough. The de Democrats in general love their government, but I suppose if we said hey if we secede and Maggie Hassan is the governor, then she'll be the governor of the uh, Arcadia country. You know, if we think that they're gonna be, if they think they're gonna be in power, then some of them will buy into it because the Democrats in general and the leftists are all about power, not about anything else. So that's one way to appeal to their senses. Another, I suppose- Republicans are all the same. <laughs> Maybe through marijuana. You know, the, the Democrats used to be good on marijuana, but now they suck. Uh, the, in New Hampshire, the Republicans are probably better at the marijuana freedom than even the Democrats. But you'd find one or two issues like that where maybe there's some, some crossover. You know, they, they claim to be for civil liberties and uh, privacy. So maybe sort of uh, take those approaches to appeal to their sensibilities. But it's going to be tough. It's going to be tough. So as a member of the Democratic Party, um, 
yeah, they're so bad on the marijuana issue, it's disgusting. What, it, it's, you think you vote Democrat for, anyways. Anyways, war. The simple answer to your question is war. The war issue is very, and, and it's not surprising that Mark, you know, because the Republicans don't really talk about, you know, how pissed off they are with the wars. It's kind of like, well, you know, we, we have wars, yeah. You know. um, so the short answer to your question is war. War. Just be, just go th full anti-war. Yeah, the full anti-war, full pacifist thing works really well. And you can talk to them on that level. And then they know that you're not actually a crypto Republican. <laughs> okay. All right. Be anti-war with, uh, with the left. I got you. Um, it's a shame most people on the left aren't, uh, like, they may say they're anti-war, but it seems like every Democrat that's even in office at, in this day and age is still pro-war. They, they're anti-war when, when they're, the, the other guy was in there, but now they're, they're all pro-war at the moment. Um, what was, uh, for all of you guys, because all of you do support secession at some point or another, what, uh, what argument or what was it that, uh, that, like a key point that like put you over the edge, like, you know what, New Hampshire should secede? Like, what, what was like a defining moment for you guys that gave you like the feeling that this is the right thing to do, uh, we should promote New Hampshire independence? One, briefly, one thing that uh, came to my mind 10 years ago was when I heard about the Free State Project. One of the reasons we chose New Hampshire, that I voted for New Hampshire, was because there's an international port. So that gives us some access to international waters and trading with other countries, so that if New Hampshire were to be ostracized or surrounded by the federal government, uh, we'd still have that access to the rest of the world. So I thought that was a compelling reason. It's not enough. To, to let us succeed, but I think it's uh, an idea of some of the arguments that we need to consider for that type of outcome. When I moved to New Hampshire, I thought that all this secession stuff was just crazy talk, and I wish you guys would stop talking about it because it just makes us all sound crazy. Um, but I'll be very honest, I at the time was listening much too much to Free Talk Live, and eventually I got like reprogrammed. <laughs> that, that would do it, that would do it to a lot of us. Well. <laughs> So I have to agree with Mark. Um, you know, the, the Free State Project, it was, it was kind of like the first uh, inkling, I guess, of secession that, that I got because I thought, you know, it, it's kind of similar you know, when you're moving to one place to be surrounded by a similar group of people. Um, but really, what, what got me thinking on the idea of secession was that um, independence, it's not about, like, because every government is made up of a bunch of people. It's not just like one mystical being. It's just a bunch of people who have, you know, these personal beliefs. And um, so if you can change their personal beliefs, you can change the political system. So I just thought, um, you know, I'm going to change my personal belief to be one of uh, independence, like in all things. And uh, I'm kind of hoping to convince other people of that too. Okay. Yeah, I mean, for me, I've, I've theoretically been in favor of the concept of political independence and decentralization for a long, long time. But moving to New Hampshire it was the first time I really moved somewhere of my own accord. I was a military brat. You know, Dad, Dad was a longtime Coast Guard man. So we moved around a lot when I was a kid. And I went wherever the family went. And New Hampshire was the first place I moved to because I wanted to. And it's the per first place where I've, I've put down roots. I've built a community and built a home. And so this is the first place where I've really emotionally felt like, you know, these are my family. These are my people. We need to free them from the uh, federal government that's, um, you know, making life more difficult for them than it needs to be. I can definitely relate to that. Like for me, moving here, I didn't really feel like attached in my own place, uh, my old home uh, back in Illinois. But here, I feel like I have a community. I feel in touch. Like I actually love living here, regardless of the community. Like I actually do love New Hampshire. So I, I can definitely relate to that. Uh, for me, like the the biggest thing that like really drove me to being a supporter of uh, secession is just seeing everything that the federal government does. It seems like every single thing they do, every law that's passed is just nothing more than taking away somehow my freedom and giving them more control over my, my life. And if I can do anything I can just promote uh, secession where I can take like 80% of the tyranny out of my life, you know, I'll, I'll push toward a, a minarchist small state government if I can get rid of the vast majority of the tyranny that's overreaching on me today. That's why we really have to push the nullification uh, process that is viable it's there people understand it at the legislative level and little by little you start uh, eroding some of the federal government regulations whether it's travel marijuana laws 
gun laws, things that people can really rally around here in New Hampshire. I think those are two good ones right there, guns and uh, marijuana, and say, hey, this works. Now, maybe then it'll start to catch on and start to snowball, and people say, hey, we like this nullification thing. New Hampshire is different. Let's keep going with it. All right, now we're, we're far away from, you know, having the day where we wake up and see the news that New Hampshire has declared independence from uh, the Union. Hopefully it's not as far as I think it is, but um, what, for the here and now, because uh, we're far away, what, what should be like a, uh, a goal of activists promoting New Hampshire independence? Because right now it's more... You know, we're, we're still building that, uh, the idea of it. So what's something that we should be focusing on now that each one of you guys feel that we should do, be, be doing? Yeah, one word, community. We need to be reaching out to people. We need to be building relationships. We need to be developing institutions that can take the place of the federal government, um, charitable institutions, uh, you know, neighbors helping neighbors, that kind of thing. One thing that I definitely want to see us in the foundation focus on doing in the long term is healing federal hurts. There are a lot of people in New Hampshire that have been hurt by the federal government. Let's reach out to those people. Let's see what we can do for them. I really strongly want to echo uh, Chandler's response, and that's to any question vaguely related to how do we end up with more freedom step zero is find a volunteer community oriented thing that you can do in your community and volunteer in your community period yep. couldn't agree more Dennis yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, getting to know the people around you, getting uh, to build that trust with them, that's absolutely essential. I would agree with that. Um, but also, I wanted to add on top of that, decriminalizing uh, victimless crimes is probably one of the biggest issues that I would look towards because we don't need more prisoners. We don't, we don't need, you know, people to be criminals. You know, most people are. Most people break laws all the time and they don't even know it. So I would just say... Um, don't send people to jail for things that, you know, aren't hurting anybody else. I broke five laws before breakfast this morning. <laughs> I think we're all felons here at some point or one or another. Um, all right. So like for me, I, I, again, community, I think is a great thing to do. Uh, the biggest push I think right now is just getting the idea out of, out of it to locals, uh, supporting campaigns. I would love to see us do like radio ads, like get into uh, conservative radio and whatnot, uh, push the idea out of independence. Um, I would love to see more confrontational stuff with like uh, different uh, politicians and questioning them like, you know, hey, do you support New Hampshire uh, independence with the Real ID Act or something else along those lines, just seeing some sort of research. Because I mean, all honestly, like YouTube videos like that could be viral hits, um, but also uh, locals will see that. Locals will share that stuff around, you know. Um, but uh, another thing I'd like to go know, um, what is the most pivotal thing? What needs to be done? Uh, it might be five years from now, might be 10 years from now, um, but is there one single thing besides just a community, but um, a, a strategy, a tactic that needs to be really implemented well before we can really talk about uh, the day that New Hampshire is going to uh, declare independence? Volunteer in your community. If it's like, yeah, yeah, just, that, that, just, and then the next thing, oh, no, no, you haven't just, started yet. Because until you did the volunteer in your community, you're a crazy person talking about crazy things. And then after you've done the volunteer in your community, you're a person who came and showed up and has helped out in the community and who we can listen to and is clearly not a crazy person. And then you'll find when you complain that the government sucks and the feds suck and the wars suck and the people are like, yeah, what are we going to do about that? I hear you. I hear you. All right. Um after that, uh, does anyone in the audience have any questions for our panelists up here in regards to uh, secession? I, hear, uh, I see Daryl coming up here. So at the beginning, you guys uh, mentioned Scotland, uh, but there was another location that I did not hear get mentioned, and that would be Catalonia. Uh, Catalonia recently had parliamentary elections and the secessionist groups wound up winning a majority of seats and say that within 18 months they will declare independence from Spain. So do you see that as 
probably a hopeful sign for things to come in New Hampshire and elsewhere around the world? Oh, definitely. I think we're, we're going to see an independent Catalonia soon. I think our friends over there are moving very quickly towards self-determination. And um, I, I don't think that the Spanish government is going to have the, the will or the wherewithal to stop that from happening. So that could be the first, uh, the first domino to fall over. Well, I'm really glad to hear that that's happening. I think that um, as more people hear about it, they'll start to look into it and perhaps feel more comfortable with the idea. But really, I, I think the best thing to get out of this is just to um, you know see how they do things when they're independent and uh, you know kind of learn from that. I would love yep. to see uh, Catalonia uh, declare independence. Um, it's, it's amazing to see like multiple different areas and regions of just Europe uh, wanting to be free from uh, like the the, go the government they've been under for hundreds and hundreds of years finally coming out like you know we we do need our independence. I'm hoping that's a. I know uh, Scotland's more uh, in the news than Catalonia, but I would love to see both of those be uh, inspirations for us here in New Hampshire and other parts of the United States. Like I would love to see Texas and you know the Northwest and other parts, even Alaska, uh, get their secession movements up uh, even higher, and you know all of us to see from the union at the same time. But I would love I love the fact that other parts of the world are challenging their lo their overhead government and wanting to leave. And for everybody on the panel, what are your thoughts on a presidential candidate who is advocating secession and the complete abolishment of the United States federal government? Yeah, my vote. I think he's not wearing shoes. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. Hi. Um, the foundation seems like a logical successor to the FSP. Uh, once the move gets triggered, um, one thing I note about the FSP is that there tends to be people gravitate either more toward the political, once they're moved, more towards the political or more towards the agorist. I think it makes for a nice balance. Um, do you see any role, and maybe it's not appropriate for the foundation itself, but <clears throat> any role for like hardcore agorist counter-economic organizing, like to start building up the institutions of what a voluntary society would be as part of this? So people aren't so f afraid like, oh, what would that look like? Oh, look over here, like come check out Portsmouth, check out Keene, check out Community Market Days. What's the role of agorism in this? Thanks. Critical. The short answer is critical. Um, and fortunately, there are good templates already. You know, people, it's famously the case that most New Hampshire towns, the smaller towns, don't have municipal garbage pickup. You know, in my town, personally, I just drive my stuff to the dump, but there are, I think, three different companies that want the privilege of driving my stuff to the dump. So people are used to the competition there, and that's, that's useful. And things like um, the stuff that you're doing with Uber and, and raising public awareness there, I think resonates well with the average person in New Hampshire who you must remember more than half of voted for the Democrats that Mr. Warden was just talking about. So there's a long way to go. Um, having the counter economy there as a working example and a friendly one that people identify with is critical. Yeah, ab absolutely. I think uh, I, I do see the foundation getting to, into that as part of our mission down the road. I would love to see us. Uh, we're, we're an educational foundation primarily, and I think that's part of that is giving people the practical tools to do the things that they traditionally l rely on the federal government to do. I definitely see agorism uh, showcasing what's if the federal government was out of the picture, all the regulations, all the taxation, everything out of the picture, how uh, a free market can operate, uh, it would definitely show benefits of why New Hampshire should secede because you're take just by acting already as if they're not there is already showing that like it can be done and it should be done. Go ahead. So in regards to um, Scotland, I had a I have a very close friend who is Scottish and who actually voted against uh, Scottish independence because she believed that Scotland's economy was not strong enough without, um, without the rest of Great Britain. So I know that we spoke, you spoke about um, using in another form of currency, but what do you say to people who don't believe that New Hampshire is strong enough to succeed on its own as a country? Strong enough economically or strong enough just period? Well, um, economically in terms of production value, in terms of anything like that. Well, to go back to the uh, the study that Rob mentioned earlier, uh, it, 
there was a, a study done by the uh, Mises Institute recently, and what they found was that New Hampshire is actually wealthier than most countries in Europe if you make the appropriate adjustments to do sort of an apples to apples comparison. And as long as we maintain a policy of free trade, you know, free trade with Canada, free trade overseas, free trade with the United States, I, I don't see any reason that we can't maintain that. It's it, it's just making sure that we don't become insular. There's no reason to, there's no reason for us to say we have to try to produce everything we need here within New Hampshire. I mean, a lot of successful countries, you know, you know uh, Monaco, Liechtenstein, these are small successful countries that rely on trade with larger partners to remain viable. Well, that's one thing as well, like with secession, you know, a lot of people think that New Hampshire or any other state that secedes is going to be like this, this like, uh, you know, rogue state somewhere in, the, in on the continent of North America where they're not going to have any trade. Like people are still going to travel down the mass and go to Boston. You know, people are still going to be trading with our, you know, we're still going to trade with North, uh, with uh, the United States, Canada or anywhere else. Um, it, if you remove the federal government, you, you're opening up uh, the ability to actually do more free trade and bring more commerce into New Hampshire than the other way around. Uh, yeah, absolutely. And I, I agree with Chan, uh, Chandler here. There's um, always a niche market for you know everyone. They all have their specialty. And New Hampshire has uh, quite a bounty of natural resources. And if you take away uh, the, the government, you actually... I, I think you'd be surprised at, at how much you'll see the free market like blossom and all these agorist businesses just start popping up everywhere. Like there's an excellent example in Detroit when, when the city went bankrupt, uh, police were no longer you know, out working. There was independent protection agencies that just you know, sprung up. They did a wonderful <laughs> job. And um, I think that's the sort of thing that we'll be seeing if, um, you know, if there is no federal government there helping us out. Um, you know, even countries or, or states that seem like they can't be strong enough to go out on their own, um, they can actually, you know, rise to fill that role when the time comes. And bear in mind specifically Scotland, first of all, has just come off of uh, a, a terrible recession brought on by a property boom, it's, it's realtors. And so, you know, that their economy has really been struggling like with the Great Recession. Um, at the same time, a large portion of Scotland's GDP gets pumped in from the North Sea. So they have this really big, um, <laughs> you know, like sugar daddy economy that's based on the government siphoning them off some of the oil wealth. Um, it's very different here in New Hampshire where people talk about agorist um, businesses and it always makes my eyes roll because that's just so presumptuous. The, the typical New Hampshire business is a little mom and pop. You know, they've got like a tree planting service or they, uh, they have bees and they sell honey or you see the trucks go by with uh, like they do construction or they do this kind of thing, uh, dirt moving. There's so many little small businesses. It's a really large part of New Hampshire's fairly rural and uh, self-reliant agrarian economy as it is. So I think there's a lot less of that danger. All right, uh, any other questions from the audience? All right, uh, is it one last thing uh, to go over? Uh, for me, like, I, I support independence because I want you know New Hampshire to be free and all that jazz. Uh, I do want to see more uh, people running for election under a secessionist platform. Uh, with you two again being uh, Mark and uh, Dennis being politicos, how far away is it to where we can get people elected on a secessionist platform? Is that just a pipe dream? Yeah, it's a non-starter. Don't don't lead with that. Don't even mention it ever when talking to voters. It's not going to happen. Not going to happen. No. I, just sneak them in. It, it, is that before or after you come out for rape and like hurting small animals? <laughs> well, that'd be before. Okay. It, I wouldn't do that after. Yeah. Um, the most important thing I think if you like want to get people elected is uh, volunteer in the community. <laughs> yes. Uh, one thing you might want to consider is uh, we've had a case where a free stater running as a Democrat has uh, been running against a free stater running as a Republican. Once you have a free stater in the race, you could throw out a sacrificial lamb candidate in the same race to argue for secession and lose to the other free stater. <laughs> I'd love to see that happen. All right. Um, Basically, closing, uh, all right, we said, let's see anyone else has a question here. Um, what would you, uh, besides a uh, community, I guess, uh, <laughs> uh, 
with uh, the secession movement here in New Hampshire, uh, the one thing I would love to see more than anything else is, uh, you know, you said going into community, but I, wa I want to know how do we relate this to a local on the, on the basic level? Like, how do we get this to like the, the, the normal New Hampshire local that's into the Bruins and drinks dunks, you know? Like, how do we, what is like the key thing to like, even if it's just not secession, just the idea that, you know, we need to be just more independence. Like, how do we relay that message in a concise manner? And so we're all over the place, like, you know, this law here, that law here, like in a concise way, like how do we bring that down to like a, that one person? Issue by issue. You don't, first of all, you, you be someone that they can deal with on like a policy basis and feel like they're having a productive adult conversation. Um, and then find the issues where people agree with you and agree with them very strongly and even things where they thought maybe it couldn't happen, things like nullifying federal laws that they don't like or passing at the state level, be it you know, same-sex marriage or medical marijuana or, or just outright legalization now, um, issue by issue. Yeah, I think issue by issue, look for, look for ways to help people. One really good example that happened um, about a year ago, and I was sorry we didn't have the, the um, resources to do anything about this at the time, there was an apartment complex in Hookset who had a lot of snow on their roof. So they hired guys to go up and remove the snow, and the, the, um, the federal government's OSHA looked at that and said, you can't do this, they don't have railings to protect them from falling off the roof, get those guys off the roof. So they got them off the roof and the roof caved in, the people in the apartments were homeless. Now, I would like to reach out, I would like to reach out to those people and just you know, see what can we do to make this better for them. The federal government did that to them. Let's fix it. And I think this is how you reach out to average people is by being the person that is there and does something useful for you when the federal government either can't or is actively causing the problem. Yeah, that's true. Um, you know, there are some people that, you know, may not have the financial resources to be able to help somebody in that situation, but definitely being there to listen to them or, um, you know, just like help them out emotionally speaking, I'm sure that would be helpful. But I, I agree absolutely with you, Dennis, on what you said about, um, you know, being somebody that other people want to talk to and uh, agreeing with them very strongly and, you know, showing them that, you know, you, you are somebody who's capable of reasoning just by uh, agreeing on them on certain things. And if you don't agree with them on others, then, you know, uh, maybe you can talk about that some other time, but just be somebody that they can trust. And um, if there's an issue, because everybody has an issue that they specialize in, whether it's marijuana legalization or gun rights or uh, no more taxes, uh, everybody has something that they're really interested in. So talk to them about that, um, you know, and, and go down to like the logical basis. Why is it that you don't want this enforced? And then, you know, maybe eventually you can expand that is why wouldn't you want, you know, all these other laws enforced? So it is an issue by issue thing. I think it's probably best if they don't get to know you as the independence guy or the independence girl. It's better if they, uh, you know, they already know you and trust you and like you, and then they they find out that you support independence, so you can talk to them about why as a friend instead of as a stranger. Yeah, everybody hates the U.S. government at one part. One thing, whether it's the gov whether it's the IRS or the post office or the military or something, you're going to find some common ground there. So start there, and then lead them little by little down this primrose path of independence. That's one thing I've done when I've gotten here is uh, like reaching out to locals. I don't go full like anarchist or secessionist or whatever. Like, you know, I try to make ties with my local community, go to events, uh, become friends with locals here before I even bring up, you know, all these ideas. Because then they get to know you as a human being before you can go full and like try and change their mind. Uh, I'm definitely been trying to do that with a lot of different locals myself. Um, but uh, at any rate, uh, for a session panel here, if you guys don't have any other questions, I would just like to thank, uh, or first of all, any closing remarks by any of the uh, panelists here, if you want to say a couple last words. Yeah, please visit the Foundation New Hampshire for New Hampshire Independence on the web at nhindependence.org. Visit our Facebook page, sign up for our mailing list, uh, you know, sign up for a free bumper sticker if you'd like to promote us, and um, you know, be sure to come out to our next event. Uh, there is always something going on, so um, we'd like to see you there. 
All right, well, thank you, uh, Chandler, Ellen, Dennis, and Mark for being on this year's succession panel. Hopefully everyone here uh, got some information that they can take and uh, help promote New Hampshire independence. Thank you, guys. Take Make sure you take a flyer in the back. Thanks again. Key Invention is brought to you by Roberts and Roberts at rrbi.co when you're serious about precious metals. We don't feed the banks. Bitcoin payment preferred. Online at rrbi.co. We'd like to invite you to visit freekeen.com. Freekeen.com features audio, video, and blogs chronicling the transition to a voluntary society. Freekeen.com also has comments and discussion forums so you can be heard. Freekeen.com. I should be in Keene, New Hampshire with the Free Staters.